In this month's edition of the best Kickstarter, we have what may be the next Undertale and a throwback to one of the 90s most famous shooters. But just before we get to them, let's recap our Kickstarter games from July. We thought July's games were top notch and the crowd agreed. The JRPG inspired Icon fell more than doubled its target goal of $25,000 by earning $61,000. Magical roguelike Wizard of Legend fared well too, gathering a cool 72k. Our number one game, Pray for the Gods, managed to just pass the half a million mark on its way to securing funding. It didn't raise the most, however, as the System Shock remake attracted a whopping $1.35 million. Finally, with 4 days left and 20,000 euros to raise, we thought Fox and Forest was a goner. In a fortunate turn of events, however, it not only reached its target goal of 95,000, but beat it by an extra $10,000. That's July recapped, so now let's get back to the present and check out the top 5 for August. In games, we're often thrown into extreme and dangerous situations, but it's not often that we play the role of emergency services. In 911 Operator, you do just that. Receiving 911 calls, you'll need to manage the situation, whether that's giving first aid guidance or sending out the police. What makes this really dynamic is that all calls are brought to life with voice acting. From the Kickstarter trailer, these calls have been really well executed and bring a sense of realism, atmosphere and emotion into the game. Another cool feature is that the game uses the maps of real cities and you can choose any city you want. 911 Operator has already successfully funded with its campaign just about to finish. What if the poor defenseless creatures in Minecraft could fight back? Well, it looks something like Volpine, an open world adventure in which animals carry swords in their mouths. The plan is to add more animals at release, but right now the playable options are fox, wolf, bear and rabbit. Each varies in speed and strength and will offer different strategies for confronting the world's monsters. Outside of fighting, exploring will nab you some food to eat, and loot to build a home and keep you safe at night. You also get access to a safe house to store your rarest items. You have options of how you play as well, whether that be alone, with friends or on public PvP servers. Volpine has over a month to run on its Kickstarter and a bit over $20,000 to raise. They promised us Deus, but they never let us in. So we live in Columni, hoping one day to go up. Columni envisions a Marxist future full of steampunk silhouettes where the elite live in luxury at the world's peak. Below them, underground resources are pumped up through columns. This is where everyone else lives, including you, the protagonist. Who the protagonist is, is kind of a mystery, as it's only through your decisions that their identity will form. The really interesting thing about this is that your choices won't determine what happens next, but instead, what happened in the past. The story is told non-chronologically, so choices you make will change the past to justify your actions. This means that the choices you make will reflect the person you are, something that we think is pretty clever. If Columni sounds like your kind of thing, there's a playable demo you can check out right now. As for the full release, we won't see this one until 2018. Undertale was arguably the most universally beloved game of 2015. It probably won't receive that same level of adoration, mostly because it's near impossible, but we reckon Glitch will provide an experience like that of Undertale. For starters, it's an RPG and evidently inspired by handheld JRPGs of the 90s. 
It's got encounters with amazingly wacky, creepy, and beyond all else hilarious monsters. And it also breaks the fourth wall. After a glitch in the world, the protagonist Gus becomes aware of your existence as the player and starts to talk to you. Something a bit different is a morality system kind of like the one in Fable, only you can't be evil. Glitched easily has a lot of potential, and if you're a fan of Undertale, and we know a lot of you are, go ahead and check out its Kickstarter. Diabotical hopes to flash back to the glory days of competitive arena shooters and capture the magic of the likes of Quake and Unreal Tournament. The game is clearly aimed at the competitive player. Developer GD Studio is primarily a media house for esports and its founder James 2GD Harding used to play Quake professionally. Ranked matchmaking, ladders, tournaments and in-depth statistics will all be ready to go at launch. The other two key selling points for Diabotical are its commitments to community and customization. From day dot, players will have free and open modding support, as well as a map editor and community tournaments. A strong and dedicated community is the lifeblood of any competitive game, and it's great to see Diabotical recognize this. Customization options that include team-based stickers will add to that effect. With about two weeks to go, Diabotical has already secured more than 130,000 euros and reached its Kickstarter goal. Expect to see the game launch around this time next year. As is always the case, thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former.